In this video, we're going to see how to read from a file in C++ using ifstream. So to read from a file, we're going to be using the ifstream object, which is an input file stream. And this object is going to let us read the contents of a file line by line. So the first thing we need to do is open the file, and then we'll pass a string for the file name. And then there's an optional parameter for the mode. We'll be reading from the file, so that's what the default behavior is. However, if we wanted to write to the file, then there's options for that. And there's also additional options to write by truncating the file or appending output to the end of the file. However, those are all beyond the scope of what we're trying to cover here. For this video, we're only concerned with actually reading the contents of a file. We're not going to write anything. Once we're done with reading from the file, we're going to call close because, again, we always want to make sure we are handling any resources that we allocate, that we free them once we're done using them. Now, as we read each line, we're going to use an iString stream to process the resulting string we get. Now, each string will be one line of the file, and iString stream lets us use the stream insertion operator to get each piece of the input line. And that's just like we saw with CN, except now, instead of dealing with a console, we're dealing with a file. So here's the start of our file. Our program is going to take a command line argument. That'll be a file name and it will read that file name and sum all the integers contained in that file. We're including IO stream because we're going to be using some of those methods, using namespace STD. Again, that's to make sure that we don't have to keep using the scope resolution operator. And then our main method is going to take parameters. And the first thing we do is we're going to check to see that we have at least two arguments. We have more than three, then we're going to ignore the rest, but we want to make sure we have at least two, the command name and the file name. If no file name is passed, we're going to print an error saying that the file name is missing. Now, C error is similar to C out, except it prints to the error stream instead of the output stream. So now, once we reach this point, we have a good file name. So what do we need to do to open the file? Well, the first thing is, is that we're going to need a file variable and the type of that is going to be ifstream and we'll need to include fstream in order to use ifstream and now that we have that variable we can say that number file open using the file name that was passed in which should be the second argument which is argv1 now we want to check to be sure that it opened correctly so we're going to say, if not number file, that means that something bad happened. And we'll say we're unable to open file argv1, and then we'll exit. So above, we did exit with one. So here we'll do exit with two, just so that if the user was checking the return code, they could verify whether or not the program worked. And if there was a failure, it would be able to differentiate. Is it because no file name was passed or because the file name that was passed wasn't valid or they weren't open, able to open it for whatever reason? So let's compile and run what we have so far. OK, so if I just say a.out, .out, I'm missing a file name. So let's pass an invalid file name. It's not able to find that. Now, if I try to do numbers.txt, that file exists. And so notice nothing happens. Now that's good because what's happening here is it's opening that file and then closing it. There's no error, so nothing actually gets gets done. Now numbers.txt has some numbers in it. And you can see that some, some lines have one number, some have two, and uh, this last one has three. And what it's going to do is for each line, it's going to go through and grab all the integers. So we're going to need a string. So I'll call it buffer. And we'll need somewhere to put our numbers. And then we'll also need a sum. And we'll initialize that to 0. So before we see the actual code that we're going to use to read the integers and calculate the sum, let's see an overview of what it's going to do. We're going to read text files that consist of multiple lines. Each line contains one or more integers. So our code, we're going to read each line. We're going to put that line into an iString stream. And then we're going to iterate over that line stream, grabbing each number off of it one by one, adding it to the running sum as we go. So before this even starts, we have a buffer, we have a sum. So now we're going to get that very first line, which is 4, 6. So that's going to go into our buffer, which is a string. So it has, a, has three characters, 4, space, and 6. Then we're going to put that buffer into an iString stream. 
don't get confused. There's not really a comma there. I just tried to figure out some way to represent that this is a stream object that contains these elements. In this while loop, we're going to pull them out one by one. So we pull out the number, then we add number to the sum. Then we get another number from the line stream, which will be six. Now notice the line stream is empty. We add six to the sum to get 10. Notice line stream is empty, so that'll kick us out of the while loop. And then we're going to get the next line, which is just five. There's only one character on that line. So we put that into the I string stream. Then we pull the number off of that, add that to the sum. Line stream is empty, so we get another line, which is three, two, one. Add that to an I string stream. Then we pull the three off, add that to the sum, pull the two off, add that to the sum. We pull the one off, and then we add that to the sum. And now the line stream is empty. There's no more lines to get from the file. So our final result after this loop is 21. So let's do this in our code. So after we've opened the file, we're going to read the file line by line. And we'll use get line to read each line into the buffer string that we created earlier. So we're going to create this line stream variable. And we're going to say this audio so that we don't have to worry about the type here. And we're going to call I string stream buffer. Now notice we're getting an error here. And that's because we need to include S stream. Now, now that we've done that, that error will go away. And now what this has done, it's taken our line and it's put it into an I string stream buffer. So now we're going to get each number from the line stream. And actually, it's not really the line stream. Its name is line stream. So that'll be a while loop. And again, we're going to use the stream insertion operator to say put whatever you get from line stream into the variable number. And if there's not, nothing here, once this is null, this will this loop will exit. So I'm, I'm doing something, and then this operation is going to evaluate to something. Once it reaches the end of the line, this while loop will exit. So now, sum is equal to sum plus number. Now, I get an error here because I can't add an integer and a string. So I could use s to i here. And initially, we'll do that. We'll change that in a moment. So now we are done. We've calculated the sum. So we'll say total equals sum. And then we're going to close our number file. So again, we open the file. We read it line by line here, and then for each line, we have a while loop that goes through and reads each number from that line. So let's compile this and run it. And you can see our total is 1825, which I think is a little high. So somewhere here we have a bug, and it is because I have sum plus equals sum plus. So that's not good. That's much better. We're going to add number to the existing sum, we're not going to add sum again. So let's compile. Let's run 38. So here's numbers.txt 17, 22, 32, 38. Just to be sure this is working, let's add a 20 and a 30 at the bottom. And now when I run it, notice I added 20 and 30 and my total increased by 50, which is what I would expect. Now, one thing that may be bothering you is this call right here. We're reading in a number, but this is actually a string. It's called number, but it's a string. And then we convert that string to an actual integer value that we can then add to our sum. Well, it turns out that this is a polymorphic function. So if we change number to an int, notice now we get a problem here because it's the wrong type of parameter because number is now an integer. So I can just add it directly to the sum. So now let's compile and run. And I get the same value I had before. So that cleans up our code a little bit. So this is a quick introduction to reading from a file in C++ using an IF stream.